Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the changes that I made to the plotting manager, the PSG of Plotter GUI. And if you haven't used this before, then I recommend checking out the first video that I show how to use this plotting manager. Now I'm creating this video because the pooling protocol is gonna be released within the next week or two. And so I think a lot of people are gonna start plotting again. Now I made some of the changes that will help you in this process, one being the replot feature where it will automatically delete your old plots as it creates new ones. I also added the integration of Mad Max if you are using that, along with some just quality of life changes to the PSG plotter. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and I can show you everything that has changed. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is update PSG plotter and you can just copy this command right here, update PSG plotter. And then you're going to want to open up PowerShell as administrator. So right click it and click run as administrator. And then basically you just paste this command in here and then it will update PSG Plotter to the latest version that has all these new features that I'm about to talk about. Now if you haven't installed it yet, you can run this command instead in an admin console and that will install it with the latest version. After you have updated the module, I would go ahead and close the admin window and just open up a regular PowerShell window. And then you're just going to type out show PSG Plotter and this will launch the uh, Plot Manager GUI. Okay, so now that this is open, the first thing I want to show you is that you can actually close the PowerShell window that launched the GUI. Now before, that would also close this window, but I have detached it from the actual PowerShell window that launches it. Another change I made is being able to check the log file for the actual plotting manager. So if you do open log, you can see that it gives you the process ID of when it starts, and then it will output any of the errors that occurs whenever you are using the plotting manager. Now you can change the log level to error or to info. The, the logging is pretty basic even for info, so you won't get a lot of information, but I do plan to make that a little bit better in the future. You can also click the check for updates. This will check for any updates uh, that are for the PSG plotter. You can see that I just updated it, so it's saying that it's up to date. If it wasn't up to date, it will ask you if you do want to update. Now if you are running this as non-admin, you will have to update it in a different PowerShell window that is admin. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to do the replotting with this manager. So I'm gonna call this job reply demo. And then I'm gonna say that we're gonna reply three with a parallel count of three. And then I'm also gonna show you how to use the enable phase one limiter. So let's go ahead and make that one. So that means that only one Chia process can be running in phase one at a time for this job. Now, if you have multiple jobs, this number won't affect those other jobs. This is only for this job. And then I'm gonna make this zero. And then I'm gonna do a case size 25 just as a demo. Do not plot with case size 25 unless you're just doing testing. Now, it will automatically change the default RAM for the case size. So if I do K35, you can, say, you can see that this gets changed to the default so I'm going to do 25 and now I'm going to pick my temporary drive so I'm going to do P add that and then I'm going to select my farming drive so my farming drive is going to be H so I'm going to add that and then I'm going to add the path to where my final destination and my plots are going to be so that's going to be Mr. Pig replot test farm Okay, so in order to replot, you're going to have to check this box right here, enable replot, and then click this button, replot config. And now this will give you a data grid of all the final destinations that you've added right here. So I'm going to click this, and then here you can see that this is the new plot file directory, which is what we supplied right here. And then here you're going to give the directory or the folder where the old plots are. Now these two folders cannot be the same. So your old plot directories can't be the same folder as your new plot directories because there's no way to distinguish between the old plots and the new plots as far as I know. So there are some restrictions. In order to see those restrictions, you can click help. And I kind of listed out everything that you need to know in order to replot. Now the first restriction is that the case size that you are plotting with this job has to be the same case size as the plots that you're trying to replot. So if you have old plots that are K32, you can't replot with K33s. Now this shouldn't be a problem for most people, but it is something to keep in mind. Now the next restriction is that the same thing that I just told you, that your 
final destination for this job cannot be the same as any of the old plot directories that you're trying to reply. Also, the plot files that you wish to reply must exist on the drive of the final plots that you're plotting um, for each drive. And then the total number of plots you wish to plot for this job cannot exceed the total number of plots that you're trying to reply. So if you have 25 old plots, well, the job can't plot 30. So the max number that you can plot for each job when you're replotting is the max number of old plots that you have. And then finally, all the final volumes added must have their own replot directory. So every volume that you add has to have uh, directories that you're trying to replot. Now I know these might seem like kind of arbitrary restrictions, but this is just to ensure that nothing goes wrong when you're replotting and to make the process very easy. So let me go ahead and close that and let's go ahead and add my old plot directory. So my old plot directory is test farm and then I can click add. And you can see that there's no plots found in this directory. So I actually have a second one, so let me add that one. And here you can see that there's a total of 16 old plot counts uh, in this directory right here. So let me go ahead and confirm changes. And then now I can go ahead and start the job and it will automatically delete one plot right before it creates the new plot. Okay, so before we start the job, let's go ahead and save the job. And this will save the job so that you can use it for later. So if you go up here, you can see that I have a bunch of saved jobs and then I can pick one of them and then click load and it'll load all the settings that I just put in. So let me go ahead and start the job now. I'm gonna click uh, yes. And then here you can see that they're all waiting to start, but they'll start within five seconds or so. Now, another quality of life update is being able to minimize these group boxes right here. So if you wanna look at just the queues where you can minimize the plots and the jobs, and then that way you can have a full, full view of whatever you wanna look at. All right, but let me go ahead and add these back. Okay, and here you can see that one of the plots have already started. However, the second queue is now waiting because of the phase one limit that we put which we limited to only having one sheet of process in phase one at a time. So as soon as this uh, plotting process gets out of phase one and enters phase two, well, this one will be free to start. And then, then the third queue will get stopped until this one is out of phase one as well. So here you can also see that I added a progress for each phase. So phase one is about 70% done and it has a little progress bar behind it. Okay, so now that this Chia process is out of phase one and is now in phase two, this one should be freed to go ahead and start the plotting process. It does take about 10 seconds because it is in a loop just checking if there's a slot open for phase one. And now that there is, it starts the process. Okay, so let me go ahead and open up the two windows where my old plots exist and my new plots will be created. So once this gets to phase three, about 75%, it will delete one of these old plots in this folder so this is my test farm 2 and then it will create the new plot and this folder the replot test farm so let's go ahead and watch this hit 75 percent and then we'll see one of these disappear okay so now that it's above 75 percent you saw one of them disappeared and then when it enters the copying phase we'll see it pop up right here okay so now it's copying it over and then here you can see that this one is in phase one and then the third queue has not started because that uh, is taking up the phase one limiter that we have set. Okay, so that's basically the replotting process. Now let me go ahead and stop these uh, queues. So you actually can stop a job now altogether. So I can go ahead and select the job right here and I'm just gonna select quit. Now this will quit all the plotting processes that are running so i'm going to click yes you can see that all these statuses got changed to quit okay so now that you know how the replotting process works in this plotting manager let me go ahead and show you how to use the mad max integration so i'm going to click new job and then i'm actually going to want to replot with this mad max as well so i'm going to load up my previous uh, job that i had the replot demo so i'm going to select that and then click load and then here you can see that it loaded my temp drive my final drive and then it even has my replotting all saved and ready to go. But I am gonna have to change this to K32 since currently Mad Max will not let you plot any other K size. And then I'm gonna change these to one and I'm gonna disable that. Now before I get, I should probably rename this job and call it MM uh, Demo. And then in order to use Mad Max, you actually had to, to fill in your farmer key and 
pull public key. So I'll fill those in. But first, I'm going to give it the path to the Mad Max executable. So you're going to have to check this box right here and then give it the full path to the uh, Mad Max executable. So let me go ahead and go to my downloads folder where I have it. And then let me copy this full path and expand this. Now you're going to want to give it the full path to this right here. So let me go ahead and add that. So chia underscore plot dot exe. And then now I'm going to have to fill in my farmer public key and my pool public key. Now obviously if you are replotting for pools, you're going to want to check this box right here and uh, use the pool contract address. Now I will be covering that maybe in another video, how to uh, plot for pools, but currently in this video um, I'm just showing you how to use the Mad Max integration. So let me go ahead and get my uh, pool public key and my former public key. Okay, so now that I have my former and pool public keys, I'm going to want to go ahead and save the job. Now I already had the job named this, but I'm going to go ahead and override it. Now if you do want to delete a job, you will have to go to this folder path right here that it gives you and then delete the actual file. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to click Start Job. Okay, and here you can see that right now I'm trying to plot with a K32, but the ones that I'm trying to replace are actually K25s. So like I said, this is one of the restrictions that I have in place. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then go back to my replot config click on this and I'm going to remove this and then go actually to my actual K32 uh, plot directory which is just farm and then I'm going to add that and here you can see I have 41 K32 files in this directory so I'm going to confirm changes save my job again overwrite it and click start job now here you can see that uh, it will not check for temp free space when using the Mad Max um, this is just currently, I haven't uh, added that in yet, but I might do it in the future. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to click OK. And here you can see that it's waiting to start. OK, so now that Mad Max has started, you can see that it will give you the progress of phase one and uh, the overall progress. Now, Mad Max does have a different uh, log file and it doesn't generate as many lines. So the progress will be slower to update since it gives a lot less lines. So it might seem like it's stuck in the very beginning just because it doesn't update very fast, but that's just because there's a lot less lines for it to generate the progress. Okay, so the process is pretty much basically the same for Mad Max, so it's just going to go through the different phases, and then once it's done, it's going to go to completed jobs. Now, all right, so since nothing really changes from here on out, I'm going to go ahead and kill the process. And then I'm going to show you some other things that changed in this plotting manager. Okay, so let me go ahead and go over some of the other little changes that I have made. So I'm going to click new job. And then let me get my settings back. So I'm going to do replot demo and then click load. And then here you can see that I added a checkbox, auto check plots. So this will automatically check the plots once it's finished being created with the default challenges of 30. And then it will give you the ratio and show it in one of the columns for the completed runs tab. Now if the ratio is below 0.7, you might want to check that plot with a higher number of challenges or just delete it and replot it. Now this won't work if you have this checked because the plot needs to be in a directory that your farmer can see, so just keep that in mind. I have also added the pool contract address field so you can create portable plots now. Now you can see that the pool public key got uh, disabled because this basically replaces that parameter. Now, if one of your drives is not showing up in this dropdown, like let's say if you have a dynamic disk, it probably won't show up if you have a RAID 0. So you can click this little button right here uh, called Switch to Basic, and this will allow you to specify the, the file path to that drive rather than having to choose from the drives that I picked up. Now I know this isn't ideal and it would be great if I could just pick up all the drives, but um, but as of right now, this is a suitable workaround as far as I am concerned. Now another thing to keep in mind, since I don't actually know which drive this path is on, I cannot check that the temporary uh, drive is filling up or that the final drive is filling up. So you have to check that for yourself to make sure that you're not over allocating space when plotting. Now here you can actually add uh, replot directories when you're doing some basic plotting as well. So I could do uh, click add, I would have to give a final directory path first. So let me go ahead and just do uh, Mr. Pig and let me do farm and then I'll click add. 
And then here you can see it's just like what we did before with the, the advanced plotting settings. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to advanced. I'm going to uncheck this and then I'm just going to show you what the auto check plots does in action. So I'm going to change these to one and then I'm actually going to change this to auto check demo and I'm going to save that job and I'm going to click start job and then we can see what the end result is. Okay so that plot has finished so we can go to the completed runs and then here we can see that it updated the field ratio so 0.83 is sufficient enough it's a valid plot and we don't have anything to worry about. Now uh, since we didn't have that box check for this one when it was created it has a you know it didn't update the ratio value you can check it manually by doing check plots but this value still won't get updated but you can see the value by clicking this button right here okay so that pretty much covers all the updates i've added to the plotting manager up to this point i also squashed some bugs and increased some efficiency in some places but i do hope you guys enjoy the features that i've added to the plotting manager and I really do hope that it makes replotting for pools not so bad and a little bit faster now that you can use Mad Max or the replot feature. Now, as you can see in the background, you know, it does take quite a bit of time to program this stuff and test it out to make sure that it runs how it's supposed to run. And it takes even longer because I'm not a programmer. And so it takes me a lot longer than, I, than it really should. But I do support, you know, how supportive you guys are and all the feedback that you gave me. And I did take some suggestions to heart and try to add them in. Now, some of them I just couldn't add in because, you know, I don't have enough time to do it. Or it just was a little bit more difficult than uh, it was worth. Alrighty, bye.